Here's our next example of how to balance equations in chemistry. So what we have here is we have two reactants. We have sodium hydroxide and we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And that will yield sodium sulfate and water, just plain water. Now, this is probably not balanced, so we have to find a way to balance it. And again, what you want to do is find one element on the left side and one element on the right side that only appears once in any one um, molecule. So here we have sodium that only appears once on the left side, doesn't appear there, and you have sodium that appears once on the left side and on the right side and not in the other molecule there. So let's start with sodium, like that. And you can see that in sodium hydroxide, we only have one atom of sodium per molecule. In sodium sulfate, we have two sodium atoms per molecule, which means in order to get these two balanced, we need twice as many of these as you will have there, otherwise they would not be balanced. So let's do that. Let's put a little block here, and let's put a little block there, and that means whatever number goes in there, you need twice as much in this box right there. So if you have one mole here, you need two moles there. If you have two moles there, you need four moles there. Three moles here, you need six moles there. Otherwise, the sodium will not be balanced. All right, so far, we're not going to put any numbers in there yet. Um, although maybe what we could do, we could say, well, for this to be balanced, no matter what, if we place a 1 here, which may change, because we may need to change that to a different number, then we'll put a 2 in here. So at least that's a good start. Let's start with that. That doesn't mean that's going to remain that way. That may change later, as other things need to be balanced as well. So now we have sodium balanced. What else do we have that only appears once? Well, here we have a single sulfur, and there we have a single sulfur. All right, so let's draw some arrows here. And so this is only one sulfur in this molecule and only one sulfur in that molecule, which means that the box in front here must be the same. Whatever number goes in here must be the same as the number in there. So we can draw a square box like that. They must be the same. Otherwise, sulfur will not be balanced. And since we have the number one in here, we're going to place the number one in there. So now we know that sulfur is balanced and sodium is still balanced. So we're getting a little closer. Okay, what else do we have? Well, now it gets a little bit more difficult. We have an oxygen here and an oxygen there. So oxygen appears twice. And here we have an oxygen and an oxygen. So oxygen appears twice on the right side as well. Here we have hydrogen and hydrogen. Well, they appear, that appears twice on the left side. And then we have hydrogen on the right side. Oh, that only appears once. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier. So the next thing we're going to deal with is hydrogen because hydrogen only appears once on the right side even though it appears twice on the left side. And we have to somehow make that balance. All right, so here we have two hydrogens. There we have two hydrogens per molecule and there we have one hydrogen. But I already have a two in front of it, so that's two times one is two plus one times two, that's four. So we have four hydrogens on the left side and we only have two hydrogens on the right side. So that's not balanced. To balance that, I'll need twice as many on that side. So let's use a different color here. Let's use red. So we have hydrogen and hydrogen. So a total of four. So we have two times one plus one times two, which is four hydrogens. And over here, we have two hydrogens. Well, we need twice as many to get that balance. So what we're going to need here is we're going to need two of these in order to get the hydrogen to balance. Now we have two times two, that's four. So now we have four hydrogens on the right side and we have four hydrogens on the left. So now hydrogen is balanced as well. Now we only have one to go. Now what may happen is when we start, when we end up balancing oxygen, we may, we may mess up the other numbers again because that may cause us to no longer have sodium or sulfur balance. So we'll see what happens there. So let's use a different color now. So now we have to look at the oxygen. So here we have oxygen over there, two times one, two times one, plus one times four, plus one times four. That's a total of six oxygen atoms on the left side equation, or six moles of oxygen on the left side equation. What do we have on the right? So we have this one, and we have this one right there. Notice here we have one times four, or we have four oxygens. So one times four plus two times one, 
plus 2 times 1. So that gives us 4 plus 2, which is 6 oxygens. And notice that. We're lucky here. We notice that we have 6 oxygens on the left side and 6 oxygens on the right side, which means that oxygen was automatically balanced by putting these other numbers down. So it looks like we now have a balanced equation. But let's check it just to make sure. So starting out with sodium, 2 times 1 sodium on the left side, 1 times 2 sodiums on the right side. So sodium is balanced. Now we go to sulfur. We have 1 sulfur on the left side, we have 1 sulfur on the right side. Sulfur is balanced. Now we go to hydrogen. We have 2 times 1 hydrogens plus 1 times 2 hydrogens. That's 2 plus 2, which is 4 hydrogens. And over here we have 2 times 2, which is 4. So hydrogen is balanced as well. And finally, we have 2 times 1 oxygen plus 1 times 4 oxygens. 2 plus 4 is 6 oxygens on the left side. We have 1 times 4, which is 4, plus 2 times 1, which is another 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 equals 6. Oxygen is balanced. We have ourselves a balanced equation. So the equation then reads, we have 2 moles of sodium hydroxide plus 1 mole of sulfuric acid, which then yields, that's what that means, 1 time sodium sulfate, or 1 mole of sodium sulfate, plus 2 molecules, or 2 moles of water. There's our balanced equation.